This is a poster on crinoids. Crinoids are one of the few Paleozoic uh, animals that are still alive with us today. And this is an illustration of what stalked crinoids look like. They, uh, they look, sometimes they're called sea lilies, but they're actually an animal related to starfish, sea stars. And the stalk is to keep them from uh, anchored to the seafloor, not being washed away by currents into unfavorable places. They resemble flowers, which where they get the name sea lily, but they're actually animals uh, related to starfish and sea stars. And when they were alive, they looked like this, but upon death, their bodies would disarticulate, fall to pieces, and all these little tiny hard plates, which look like beads, will cover and smother rocks. There are entire rock layers in the Cincinnati uh, series of crinoid body parts, where the rock is just smothered with uh, crinoid stem pieces, or called ossicles. They are found by the millions. Just, you know, per rock, there might be several hundred, if not a thousand per rock, and there's thousands of rocks you can find like this. Overwhelming, uh, overwhelming to see just how plentiful life was back in the Ordovician, and how fortunate we are here in Cincinnati, Ohio, to be able to go out and see the remains of these ancient seas. Upon death, what happens is that the first thing to disintegrate will be the arms. These arms open up and they have uh, what looks like hair-like structures and they filter feed, they eat the plankton. These arms are the first to go. This is called the calyx, the arms, the filter feeding arms. They disintegrate. Uh, the stem will remain intact. Um, many weeks, maybe months afterwards. However, it disintegrates as well, but it, obviously it's the last to go. Uh, an, a rough analogy is a flower. Think of a flower that you get from the florist where the petals fall off real, very quickly, but it takes a long time for that stem to disintegrate into nothingness. Here's some of the crinoid uh, terminology. Um, down at the bottom, there's a hold fast, and there's also what are called cirri. Uh, also, these hold fasts can have root like structures. On some species, they actually look like a disc, uh, a disc, and almost like a suction cup, I would say. And um, we'll find those attached to uh, the seafloor or to uh, seashells, uh, the brachiopods. And Here's the stem, or the column, the crinoid column, it refers to this long stem piece. The calyx is the body, the guts, the stomach, and the intestines of the animal here. Here are the long uh, filter feeding arms. This just shows a cutaway in one side, uh, one on each side. There's actually multiple ones, of course, as you see up there. Um, this shows what's called, the, in some literature, it's called the anal pyramid. Usually it's referred to as the anal chimney. That is the mouth and the anus are very close together. The anus is a raised structure, and that's why it gets the uh, name chimney. You don't see it on this species illustrated, but they're very elongated so that the, uh, the waste is put out into the water stream and the animal doesn't uh, eat it back in. There was some, there was some skin that... Uh, enveloped these these discs which you uh, only see as individual plates but in real life they it was uh, had some skin around it or I should call it a membrane this is a color version of uh, a diorama this is a museum model on display for the public and it shows what uh, some of the filter feeding arms look like and um, Here's a photograph of one that has all the arms, all the filter feeding arms ha are closed at night while this animal is inactive. And note the color. It is red, white, and blue. That is just incredible. Mind-blowing on all, all the incredible beauty of uh, marine life. Sadly, that will never be known to us um, just how rich these animals uh, were colorful when they were alive because the fossils don't show that whatsoever we just have, we're stuck with these very dull gray fossils and we'll never know how pretty they were in real life
Let me show you yet another science poster on cry noise. This shows the anatomy uh, some of the interradial plates that go around the calyx. There's radial plates, basal plates, depending on the location, and some of them are very geometrically um, ornate. All your crinoids have five-fold symmetry. Human beings have uh, two two-sided symmetry, but these guys are based on a five radiating pattern. This section is referred to as the fixed arms, and here are the free arms. These arms are also referred to as pinules. When you see just a f one or two by themselves on a rock, they actually resemble, superficially they re look like feathers. I've had some people actually uh, misidentify certain fossils as bird feathers that were actually crinoids just because they were not familiar with uh, crinoid fossils. Here's a photograph of some living sea lilies that are, again, deep down in the ocean. They will hold the arms in a capture position like this into the current. The current would be going this way, and their arms would be catching it. Their pinnule arms would be filter feeding it in this direction. They would pass the food that they capture to the mouth and digest it. Okay, so crinoids are echinoderms. I'm going to read a little bit from the poster. Uh, the echinoderms include starfish, brittle stars, sea urchins, and sand dollars, sea cucumbers, feather stars, and sea lilies. There are over 6,000 species alive today. They only live in the oceans from shallow tide pools to the deepest sea trenches, from the Arctic to the tropics. Nearly, nearly all echinoderms have five-sided symmetry radiating out from their centers. They are characterized by plates and spines made of calcium carbonate embedded in leathery skin. They all have a water-filled vascular system that operates tiny tube feet used in locomotion and feeding. A few can swim, but in generally they all live on the sea bottom. Many are carnivores eating anything they can catch. Others eat plankton, algae, or detritus. They, have e they are eaten by crabs, shrimp, fish, snails, and starfish. Fossils of echinoderms are very common in Cincinnati, but are usually a separated plates. Whole specimens are hard to find. Crinoids, sea lilies, are the most common varieties. Rarer finds include starfish and other extinct forms with no modern descendants, such as eterasteroids, rhombiferans, cyclostoids, and stylophorans. This is a photograph of an echinoderm, sometimes referred to as a seated starfish and all those individual plates uh, dead in the fossilized position it is collapsed but in real life this thing inflated upwards. Talk about that on another video. Echinoderm means spiny skin. The sea urchin uses spines to protect itself from predators like triggerfish. Echinoderms are usually five-sided and have spines or plates for protection.